Hello friends, my name is Laura Rezac and I'm the Associate Rector at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. And I'm so glad to be with you today, this Easter Sunday, for our family faith formation and for the last story in our series on the faces of Easter. So let's start by getting ready. So get into a comfortable seated position. And when you're ready, we're gonna close our eyes and take three calming breaths. This helps us to get ready to enter into the story. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes and inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Keeping your eyes closed, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for so many things, for all of the stories we have of the life of Jesus, and we thank you especially for the story of Easter. Be with us today as we hear the story of the resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, you can open your eyes and join me for our story. Now, you have seen my struggle the past couple weeks trying to find a table long enough you know, I have not been able to find a table long enough to tell the whole story. Isn't that wonderful? That's a, that's a sign of the mystery of this story, that it's so big, it's, it's hard, to, hard to fit sometimes. That's why we need a long time to prepare for the mystery of Easter, because it's just so big. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna try something new. I'm here at the church, and what I'm gonna do is try to put this cloth that we've been using out on the floor in front of the altar and try to tell the story that way. Let's see if it works. Okay. All right. So I've got my purple cloth. Do you remember what purple is the color for? Yeah. Purple is the color for Lent. We've been in the Lenten season for quite a long time now. It's also the color of royalty. It used to be that most people couldn't wear this color. You had to be a king or a queen to wear this color. I'm gonna roll it all the way out here. Now, last time I was at the sixth, the sixth Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Lent, the sixth face of Easter. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six places. And it looks like I just barely have enough. I barely have room for one more. All right, so you can help me. You should remember some of the parts of this story now. Some of them should be familiar to you. Do you remember this first face of Easter? Yeah, it's the mother Mary and the father Joseph and the baby Jesus. That's when he was born a king, but not a king like anyone expected. He was born a king in a barn. Let's set him down right here. It can be that first face of Easter. Just scoot that up a little bit. There we are. How about this one? Do you remember this? That's the second face of Easter. That's Jesus right here when he was about 12 years old and he went to the temple and talked with the priests and the rabbis. They talked with each other and Jesus listened very carefully, but he also taught them some things too. It's the second face of Easter. Third, do you remember this one? Right here's Jesus. Do you remember who this is? Yeah, that's his cousin. That's John the Baptist. This is when John baptized Jesus in the River Jordan. And here's the dove that came down and alighted just above him where he was being baptized. And they heard a sound. Some people thought maybe it was thunder, but some people thought it was a voice saying, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. This is the third face of Easter. But even after all that, remember, Jesus didn't quite know what his work was going to be. He had to go out into the desert to figure it out. And while he was in the desert, he experienced many things. 
he thought about what kind of king he was going to be. Not a king like people expected, not a king with armies and chariots, but a different kind of king. And when he was done in the desert, after he'd been there for 40 days and 40 nights, he came back to be with people and to do his work in the world. Do you remember what his work was? Jesus' work was to come close to people, especially people that nobody else wanted to come close to. Here's Jesus. You can just see the back of his head. Here's Jesus touching a blind man's eyes. You know, people who came close to Jesus, they were never the same. They could see things they never saw before. They could think things they never thought before. They were healed. Being close to Jesus changed them. And now we come to our story from last week. Do you remember the story from last week? This is when Jesus went to Jerusalem for the last time. While he was there, he decided to have supper with his disciples. He gave them bread and said, whenever you break it, I will be there with you. And he gave them wine and said, whenever you drink it, whenever you share it, I will be there with you. The disciples, his friends, didn't really understand what he meant, but they understood later. Now, while Jesus was there, he realized that he was going to be arrested. He realized that there were people who were coming for him, Roman soldiers who were coming to arrest him and take him away. So Jesus went off to pray in a garden. Some of his disciples, some of his friends went with them. When Jesus was finished praying, it was very dark. And he came out of the garden and there was one of his disciples, one of his friends named Judas. And when Judas came up to Jesus, that was a sign to the temple guards. That was a sign to the soldiers to arrest Jesus and take him away. So the soldiers came out of the shadows and they took Jesus away into the darkness. And then Jesus's disciples, Jesus's friends, they also disappeared into the darkness. But this is not the end of the story. We still have one more face of Easter. That night, the night that Jesus was arrested, it was a very confusing one. The next day, Jesus was taken outside of the walls of the city and he was crucified. That afternoon, Jesus died. When he died, the sky grew dark. Jesus was taken down from the cross where he had died and he was buried in a cave. A great stone was rolled into the opening of the cave to close it like a door. This all happened on Friday. The next day, Saturday, was so quiet. You could almost hear the earth breathing. On Sunday, it was the women who had the courage to go to the cave, to go where Jesus' body was, just to be close to him, just to be close to Jesus. They wanted to remember him, even if it was sad. When they came to the cave where Jesus' body was, they found that the great stone had been rolled back and that the cave was empty. Jesus had died on the cross, but he was somehow still with them as he is with us, especially in the bread and in the wine. 
even though he had died and been put in a tomb, he was somehow still with them, somehow still alive. When you look at this side, crucifixion, you know that the other side is there, Easter, where Jesus is alive and with us. When you look at this side, which is Easter, you know that this side, crucifixion, is there. And you cannot pull them apart. They are always together. This is the mystery of Easter. And it makes all the difference. And so on Easter, the colors change to white, to the color of celebration. Now we have all of the faces of Easter. I wonder which face of Easter is your favorite? I wonder which face of Easter, from the baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph to Jesus in the temple with the priests, Jesus being baptized or Jesus in the desert, or Jesus healing a blind man, or Jesus sharing a meal with his friends, or this one today, the mystery of Easter. I wonder which is your favorite. I wonder if there's any face that we could leave out and still have everything we need I wonder if there's any one of these faces that we could leave out and still have everything we need. I wonder where you are in the story. I wonder where you are in the story. Friends, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter. May it be a day of joy and celebration to you after all of these weeks of Lent. Until I see you next time, be well, stay safe, wear your mask, and I'll see you soon.